So right, let's let's write this and keep it in front of our eyes what we have just derived. Now it will be a good idea to actually stop at this stage and think about it. How did I derive this and how you can again derive it? Give give some time to yourself thinking about this. Okay. Now we'll check the, the validity of this or we will actually cross verify certain equations. We uh, have gravitational force F gravitational force we all know is G M 1 M 2 or G M M by R squared. G uh, is the gravitational constant, capital M is the mass of the earth, small m is the mass of the body and R is the radius of the earth. This is valid when the body is very close to the surface of the earth. Okay, let us use capital R here. Now force, we will we'll try and use this equation, we will try and use this equation. We will see that uh, force is negative differential of displacement. Okay. Now, uh, potential energy using this minus du will be equal to f into dx. Now, u will be negative integral of f into dx. You can really very easily derive this relation from this. Actually, I have just integrated both sides. Integration of du will be simply u and integration of f dx is what we have to calculate. So, if force is given, if potential energy is given, the differential of it will give you the force. If force is given, the integration of that, the negative of integration of that will give us the potential energy. So, let us try and find the potential energy in this case. The potential energy u will be equal to negative integration of g m m by r squared into, I mean, if I am using r squared here, then I should use dr, keeping the variables, same variables. If I am using dx, then I should use x squared here. Since I have used r squared, let me use dr here. A g m m comes out of integration. So, basically, you have to integrate 1 by r squared. Or Keeping the variable same, if I have used smaller, I should use smaller here as well. Okay, so integration of my, one by r squared is minus one by r. So the, this will come out as g m m by r. So this is a gravitational potential actually, and this is a constant. When the body is close to the earth, this r is actually the radius of the. We can approximate this if if the body is very close to the earth then this distance is actually the same as to a good approximation same as the radius of the earth. So, this actually remains constant when the body is very close to the surface of the earth and this we can we generally write as a small g. Now, actually that small g is this g m by r square force we write as m g this is not written as small, small g i am sorry so nevertheless this is a potential g m m by r using the formula that we have derived okay similarly for a spring mass system for the spring mass system we know that force is minus k x with proper sign because the force of the spring is always against displacement. If we are trying to displace it inward, the spring will force it outward. If we are trying to elongate it and pulling it out by pulling it outward, the spring will try and bring it inward. Force, spring force is always opposite to the displacement. So, considering it with a sign, if, we, if I am taking displacement to be positive, the spring force should be negative. So, using the proper sign, the spring force is force vector is equal to minus k into displacement vector. That is the proper, that is the proper equation using the proper sign convention. Now, f is minus k x. Now, we know the force. So, here we can find the potential energy stored in the spring by using this equation. Now, potential energy is minus f. f is minus k x into dx. 
minus k will come out become plus k and x into dx is what we have to integrate. Integration of x is x square by 2 that becomes half k x square which we all know that the energy stored in the spring is half k x square. Okay, so uh, fine, so this works. Okay, now if you have studied atomic structure, they must have taught you somewhere in this chapter that they must have taught you this graph. potential energy versus the intermolecular distance if I may call it D and the graph comes out to be like this. This is the distance between two molecules. This is the most stable point. If the distance between the molecule increases than this distance, then there is an attractive force which dominates and brings the molecules closer. If the distance between the molecule get reduced by this than this distance, then the attractive force actually pushes the molecule back to the same position. So the most stable position of the mo molecules, the distance between them is this R0. And most of the time, the distance between the molecule, two molecules is indeed R0. So they, they get stretched, come back, they get compressed and come back. So, they return to this mean position of R0. They teach you this. Now, picking from here, we will see why actually there is, this is the most stable position and how to read actually when we will get a most stable position. Like, we can, you can see that th th there is a potential well and at the most stable position, the potential energy is minimum. So, we will try and correlate this that why at the stable position the potential energy is minimum and what will be the other conditions for the potential energy to be minimum and the position to be more stable. Now before I go teaching you that, actually I think it would be a good point for a recap of dy by dx because that will be using regressively here. So if you already if you are very comfortable with dy over dx, then you can skip the next 5 minutes of discussion and go straight into the condition of stability. Otherwise, it will be a it will be worthwhile to actually listen to this. Because I think you are still in the initial stage of your physics and you have not get into the calculus of maths. So, so I am doing it for you. For any graph, suppose of this kind. dy by dx is actually the slope of the tangent at that point. So, if I have y here and x, I have drawn, I have a relation between y and x and I have plotted them on a graph, then if I find dy by dx, suppose considering a simple equation, y is equal to x squared. So, finding dy by dx is simple, I have taught you. dy by dx here would be 2x, okay. So, at any point, at x is equal to 2, you can find what is dy by dx. At x is equal to 2, dy by dx is 4. At x is equal to 1, it is 2. So, at any point, you can find what is dy by dx. It's easy. And physically, I have told you before, I'll just do the quick recapitulation. At any point, dy by dx is the slope of the tangent that you draw there. If you draw a tangent like this, then the slope, the angle theta which it makes with the x axis, the tan of that, that is called slope. We represent slope by m and m is actually tan theta. The theta is the angle which tangent makes with the x axis. That is tan theta and this tan theta is equal to dy by dx. Now, if you have, you must have studied uh, about tan theta and its graph and everything. Tan theta is positive in the first quadrant, meaning when the angle is between 0 to 90 degree. Tan theta is negative when the angle is between 90 degree to 180 degree. So this theta, you can see, you can, you can actually see at the graph what the tangent, the angle, whether it is making an acute angle, the angle is greater than 90 degree. 
at this point and all these points the angle is actually going to be less than 90 degree just by looking at the graph you can make out but points like this if you make a tangent here the angle which it makes with the x-axis and you always go calculating angle from the positive x-axis anti-clockwise you don't see angle like this you see from positive x-axis anti-clockwise so the angle of this line with x-axis is greater than 90 degree it's an obtuse angle so for tan theta because theta is greater than 90 tan theta will be negative and so would be dy by dx so i mean to say that equation if you find from the expression that dy by dx is negative that means the tangent at that particular point is making an angle greater than 90 degree this would be of importance when we do the discussion on potential energies and the stability so this thing is clear dy by dx is tan theta it's a slope and dy by dx is negative that means the tangent is making an angle more than 90 degree if dy by dx is positive, then the tangent at that point is making an angle less than 90 degree.